Hey guys, it's Ryan. Welcome back to my Illustrator Basics course. This is lesson 5.1 and we're going to talk about type. We're going to talk about the tools that you can use to create type on your screen, uh, on your artwork. And then the next, uh, we're going to talk about type editing, which is actually uh, pretty fun. So hopefully uh, you've been following along and if you need to review anything before you get started here uh, go back to my youtube channel and uh, review those items that you feel like you need to do um, this is again for uh, students that i have in a live class for university of idaho uh, if you are participating in this class outside of that group via youtube well thank you and welcome uh, however, you won't get any uh, <laughs> university credit for this, and uh, it may disappear at any time. Uh, again, this is for my, my students, so hopefully uh, it's helpful for you. And uh, anyway, let's get started with type. Okay, so obviously when you're doing any design, um, there's a good chance that you're going to need to use type either as uh, taking notes for or making notes for other uh, designers or for your own work that you have type integrated in it maybe you're doing a page layout maybe you're doing a uh, some screen graphics that have typography in them um, either way however you use Adobe Illustrator eventually you're going to need to use type and as you see in the toolbar it's fairly high on the list of important things. First is selecting, next is uh, drawing with the pen tool and some of the other, uh, the curvature tool, and then before even shapes, you have type. And the reason for that is type is so integrated in a lot of the things that, you, that you're gonna need uh, to, to use in your designs. So, how do we use type and uh, where, where can we find how to edit it? Well first, obviously on the toolbar, the type tool is the, uh, the shortcut key is letter T, T for type, that one's fairly easy. The other place you can find it, there's a whole menu up here in the top, strictly dedicated toward type. And you can change fonts and use recent fonts, you can change the size, and a whole bunch of other things uh, that we may or may not get into in very much depth today. Um, some things we will cover, some things are going to be more uh, as needed in the future. Um, so just keep in mind that type is a big portion of design work in any field of design, industrial design, to graphic design, to apparel design, to uh, even automotive design or architectural design. So as you're using Illustrator, maybe even in um, you know a comic book layout you're gonna you're still gonna need to use type so keep that in mind type is big and here we go so let's open the type tool and as we do that you'll see some things change on the top and we'll get into those issues right there um, first the easiest way to use type tool is to simply click somewhere on your screen and begin typing. I'm gonna to switch to my keyboard and mouse rather than my stylus just because of the nature of using type. I want to be able to have my keyboard right in front of me. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now I will type some text on the screen. Okay, so when you're working with type, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that a lot of your shortcut keys won't work. For example, if I now want to switch to the selection tool, I would usually hit the letter V. Well, if I hit V, the type tool thinks, hey, I'm putting V right there in, the, in where the cursor is in the type. I don't want that, so I can delete it. So you're going to have to get into the habit quickly of getting out of your type. So how do you get out of the type that you're typing? Well, the easiest way is to hold down control 
or command on your keyboard and click somewhere else. Now you see that I still have the type tool active when I let go of the control or command key and so that now allows me to change the type features um, but then I also don't have this type selected. So if I want to reselect it but not go into the type to edit it, I'll hold down control again or command on a Mac and simply click it. And now you see it's got an anchor point and it's got a line. And if you continue holding down control or command, you'll see it has the uh, the same bounding box and, and controls that we've seen on other shapes. So the question you may have is do the same modifiers apply to that while you're holding down control or command? Yes is the answer. If you hold down shift as you see it will constrain it to regular to uh, be the proper uh, dimensions proper ratio of height to width as you drag. You can flip it upside down. You can uh, do some things like that. And then also as you hold down Alt and Shift, well Alt will take it from the center point of that line of text and Shift and Alt will bring it from the center point of that line of text and constrain it just like the rectangle tool, just like the ellipse tool, all of the tools that we've discussed already, these modifiers also work for the type tool. Okay? So, the next thing that you're going to probably work with in type is how to edit some text that you've already typed. So, that's very simple. You have the type tool selected. You can simply drag over and edit some text on the screen. And then again to get out of that you hold down control or command and click and then you're out of that that piece of text. So then you can click somewhere else and type something else over here. Or you could click down here. But remember if you don't get out of that text first no amount of clicking is going to escape or, or get you to escape from that text. So command or control, click somewhere else, and then you can type yet another line of text. Okay? Remember to hit command or control and click out so that you don't accidentally start typing and then try to use the modifiers like the zoom tool or the hand tool or the spacebar to drag with the hand. If you're doing anything you want to escape from your text before doing anything like that. And while you have the text or the type tool you're able to use those modifiers um, but at the same time you have to have escaped and have no text selected on your screen. Okay? Hopefully I've shown that sufficiently. Um, now, now that you have your text, again you can move it around just like you would any other object. You can scale it with those those modifiers. You can even near the corner and tilt it, you know, rotate it. You can constrain it while you're rotating by holding down shift. And again, I've got shift and command or shift and control on a PC. And so once with, with the type tool or with any tool, while you're holding down command, you switch to the selection tool that you had previously. That, that should be review enough for you right now because we've covered it in a lot of the lessons, especially back in the finger dance 2.4, 2.5, can't remember which one that was. So the finger dance, if you need to review, 
uh, these modifier keys, command option, shift, and the space bar. Okay, so now I have some text on the screen. Um, let's go first before we discuss the character panel and the paragraph panel and these options up here. Let's go first to the uh, text box. Now there are two ways to make a text box. The first one is to simply drag a box while using the text tool. And with that I can start to type inside the box Whoops, and it will wrap the text to the next line. As you see, that's, that's exactly what it did. I can fill up the whole paragraph, start another paragraph, etc. And I can, I can do that with the text box. Now, one thing you may have noticed, if I hold down control or command while in a text box, I have some controls on the width of that text box and the height. Whoops, I think I clicked off. And the height of that text box. Now, this is really important if you're doing a page layout and you need to adjust the columns or the size of your text box or something like that. So that's the first thing to notice. The second thing that you'll notice is as I fill up the type down and it goes past the edge of the edge of the box, the bottom of the box, then I get this little red icon here, this little red box, and for that if you control or command and click on that it changes to a what's called a threaded text. And so you see that it it looks kind of like add a new text box and that's exactly what it'll do. It'll add one the same dimensions you had previously, so it'll add one this size, but it'll continue that text and it draws this little line from the previous to the next and if you edit the first one it'll edit you know that line that box of text as though it continues on throughout the uh, the story the the columns and you can go and add to it if you need to and you can add as many of these as you need. So I'll click this one again and now I've got a third one. So that is how to use the threaded feature of uh, your, your text boxes. Um, the other things that you can do with the text box are controlled by the paragraph functions and I'll talk about that here in a second. And here we go. I've got these nicely spaced. Oops, I only needed I needed that one. Okay. So, I've got these right here. Uh before we talk, well, let's talk about the paragraph now. So, the paragraph panel is right here. Um and that's just by clicking the word paragraph. You have a few options here. You have a line left, a line center, and a line right. And all you need to have is the text box selected and it will do, when you click on those, it'll just do that single text box. So as you see, this one is changing and these other two are not because I only have the one selected. If I drag my selection around both of the, or all three of them, then I can change the alignment that way. Um, in the paragraph tab there are some other options. You see those first three. There's the justify which will make left and right line up to the to the border of the text box. And then there's anything if there <laughs> I don't have anything left over here. 
So let's do leftovers. So we have some leftovers. Um, go here. So as I, let's click out of that and select all three boxes again. Uh, bring up the paragraph tab. So the justify with the last line aligned left, as you see, justify with the last line aligned center, aligned right, just you know like you see it, or justify all lines. And justification is when you justify, you're adding the same amount of spacing in between each word so that the left and the right are both against the edges of the nice column and so it gives it a, a nice whoops a nice look and you can see that there um, but then if you only have a few words then it looks weird so then it's what it, whatever you or your editors preference is and those choices are, are right here um, the other things that you can do with your text box and the paragraph are you can change the margins so you've got the left indent and I can just do it on the paragraph that I'm working in. So right now I had that paragraph and then you can do this other side and that'll bounce everything down as needed. You can do a first line indent and you can do spacing before and there is nothing before so let's do spacing after. So now that paragraph adds some spacing some line spacing afterward. The other thing that is on by default is the automatic hyphenation and that will add hyphens in words. I don't think I have any in this for whatever reason. I must have short enough words that it doesn't need to uh, do that. Um, but I usually check, uncheck that because there's nothing worse than reading a column and well I mean that's a preference but I don't like I don't like reading a column of text and having to stop the word halfway through but that's again that's a personal preference so that's the paragraph styles and that's as we're working inside of a text box so the other things to consider with text first um, is the font face so the character so what we're going to do is select something and there are a few different ways that you can change the the type so you can go to the font to the type menu down to font and you can choose from any of the fonts that you have and as you can see I have a whole bunch <laughs> I'm going to skip that um, the other option is right here as you have the type tool the uh, text the characters are shown here so that you can change uh, your text your, your font family and that will also give you access to the style for example if I go to Helvetica new I can choose all of the different styles condensed black thin light blah 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 so that's there. The other place, uh, the other thing to consider is the font size. And you can either type in a value here, like 36 points. And type is typically in points simply because uh, points are the measurement of type. So um, unless you change to in your preferences, which again was Command K or Control K and go to type um, excuse me not there units uh, your type is going to be points unless you use inches millimeters or pixels and I typically use points just because of if you're familiar with Microsoft Word uh, you're going to use points if you're familiar with a lot of the other uh, editing software out there you're going to be mostly concerned with the point size uh, scale. Um, so if, if you're using 12 point font in Microsoft Word and you want to have something similar in Illustrator, you're going to still use the 12 point font. So uh, just keep that in mind. There is a place to change those preferences if you so desire. I'm going to cancel and leave that alone. But 
Just know there are some presets for the uh, font size and you can also either type it in or manipulate using the arrow keys here. Um, one thing to remember, the point size, 72 point means that the font is going to be one inch tall, 72 points to one inch. Um, and, and that might help you remember about how big the text is that you're working with. So 36 points is half an inch tall. So my letter E is half an inch tall. And you could verify that by turning on your rulers, Command R, Control R, and uh, zooming in or drawing a guide or whatever. I, I'm not that concerned. I just know that um, this is about the size that I, I maybe wanted at that time. So the character panel, because we have the font family, font style, font size, and then we have the paragraph panel that we've already discussed. So let's look at the character panel. There are two or three ways to get it. So you can go to type and then to, um, well, I don't see it here. Oh, that's right. It's not there. It's under window under type and then go to character but you can see that there is a character uh, the type the character panel uh, shortcut key and that is command T or control T and that should be fairly easy to remember because the type is the T so to control or command over that type uh, you just use the same shortcut with the command or control so we'll open that up um, this version up here is similar. It's just missing the, as you can uh, drag that up to compare, um, it's missing the paragraph and open type on the sides of it. So don't worry about that. Um, now, as you look at the uh, character panel, um, you'll see some things. If it doesn't look like this, if it looks like this or maybe this, all you need to do is just twirl or not twirl but click toggle these little arrows here to make it bigger and then you can have all of the options again we have the uh, same functionality or the same fonts that we had that you can access from there you have the regular or a, the type style you have the size and font size is is very important let me go to um, I'm gonna select out of this I'm going to select in the uh, actually I'm going to delete this I'm gonna take a whole oops I forgot you have to select out first so let's do this and I'll make a new text box with just some random text in it I'm going to go to the paragraph paragraph panel and remove all of the uh, settings. I could either do it individually, line by line, or I could just go to reset panel and it'll reset the whole panel. Okay, so now everything is back to reset. You can see I have the nasty hyphenation stuff that I don't like, so I'm just going to ignore that for now. Um, so the font size things to consider you can increase the font size and as you do that the leading increases what in the world is leading says anybody who's not familiar with typography well that is the line spacing between vertically between two lines of text so from here and i don't know if you can see it from this point to this point and that is the letting and basically it has to do with the typography that when you had a, a line of type that you set in little uh, metal type character by character so in this case it would be you would put in the K you'd put in the S you'd put in the D you'd put in the J and you'd put it all in the in the line well the line between each row was called the letting. So there you go. A little history for you. Typography lesson. Um, don't worry about it. 
just know that by default it's going to be set to auto and so it'll be in these parentheses and you'll see it go up and down as you increase and decrease your font size you can also change it and again remember that the smaller the number the lower the space between the text the larger the number the more the space between the text so 72 point means there is one inch between each row of text remember 72 points to an inch that's how it I knew that so quickly alright so let's put it back on auto and let's see what else we can focus on well uh, this is called kerning let me let me show you and it is the character or the the kerning is the space between two characters or the their their closeness together and by default it's automatic and so in order to use that let me let me select everything again and show you how it doesn't work you can't change it and it'll tell you kerning on extended selections can only be set to auto or zero to modify spacing between multiple characters use the tracking options and that is because well kerning is the space between two characters and tracking is the uh, space and spacing of a set of characters so I'll explain I know it, it you're like what okay so if I click between this S and this D here then I can start playing with the kerning and I can bump it up and you can see those letters start to move apart and that is 200 200 is the value of the kerning for this space between the S and the D so let's drop that back down to zero and it can also go to negative numbers and that will push so that there is no space in fact they're they're very close together they're almost they are actually overlapping at that point so you can change the kerning which is the space between two letters two characters so it could actually be the space between two spaces as you hit on the space bar um, that there's no reason that can't happen okay so that is your kerning and then the uh, tracking so letting is the space vertically kerning and tracking is the space horizontally so let's grab this whole word ASDJ HFG which doesn't spell any words or spell a, an actual word so we'll change the tracking let's bring it down to negative 100 and you can see that it just scrunched everything together we can bounce it back up to uh, 200 and it's spaced it out very nicely so that we can clearly read each of those as uh, as though we are taking a, a vision test um, so tracking sets the spacing among between multiple characters kerning is only the space single space between two characters so keep that in mind as you're working with the uh, character panel um, the next thing and I'm gonna put a disclaimer here font purists will hate you if you do this I don't care um, sometimes you need type that is just a little bit uh, extended or squished and so that's what these two next ones are for so vertical scale so I can change the vertical scale and you can see that nothing changed except the height of this it's now 50 percent of the original scale as you can tell by this a here as compared to this a so vertical scale can go down to uh, you know 25 you can even go down to like one percent if you so desire I don't know why you would that's really weird but if you leave it at a hundred percent then it's exactly as the uh, typesetter intended um, and you can do those individual characters you can do them on whole words you can do them on the whole paragraph you can do them on uh, any old piece of type that you that you'd like uh, you can increase it so it's larger 
then it should be 200%, so twice as tall as the other normal uh, text. So uh, think of that if there's something that you want to do with your text and you can't get it by picking the font size to look the way that you want. You, you can always adjust the vertical scale. You can also adjust the horizontal scale. And that will do the same. It will shrink it skinny. It will make it fat. Um, you know, just play around with that as you need. And then let me show you the next thing in our, our list. And that is the baseline shift. Now that sounds like a science fiction novel or something, but it's not. Uh, the baseline is this line at the base of your font. All of the H, uh, D, A, F, anything that has a straight line that comes down and stops, it's going to stop on the baseline. Okay, so that's the line on which all of the uh, rounded portions of the font actually, uh, unless it has descenders which go below like this J, this J descends below the baseline. The G has a descender below the baseline. So uh, that's your baseline. Okay, so let's shift the baseline. Obviously a vertical shift if you go in a positive direction will move it up above that baseline 12 or however many points. I could do uh, 35 points if I wanted to. And that means it is 35. If I if I go one more, that's a half an inch. 36 points, remember? It's uh, half of 72, so that's half of an inch. So it's half of an inch above the baseline. I could also drop it below the baseline. There's 12 points below, and you can tell. Just think of like temperature. It's below zero, so it's below the baseline. Um, so you can play with the baseline you can do some cool things uh, with the baseline and then over here this next field is the rotation just as you would assume it's the rotation and now it looks like an S and a P but it's not remember it's a S and a D let's just move one of them at a time you can go 45 degrees which is um, that direction and it it shows you that it goes clockwise okay so if you're gonna go 90 degrees there it is clockwise is it clockwise I don't think that actually is clockwise I dare say that looks counterclockwise or anti-clockwise if you're in the UK uh, so anyway um, you can adjust the the rotation of the characters uh, the next thing you can do is really um, quite simple, all caps. So all capital letters. You can do small caps, which means that they are all capitals, but they are only as tall as what's called the X height. And now an X in this font looks like that. And you can see that all of these all of these other small caps letters are the same height as that X. So uh, another typography term, the X height, which means the height at which the X of the font stops. So all letters, the A, S, any, any of the lowercase letters that don't have an A sender, which goes above the X height. So that's all you need to know for that. Um, the uh, again the small caps are going to make all capital letters but it's going to be only as tall as the X height and you can toggle and do both excuse me let's do some of these letters as all caps some of them as small caps um, you can even do uh, small caps as a superscript and you can do letters as a subscript, which puts it below to a certain size and 
and um, baseline shift it it predefines those for you and you just toggle and turn those back on and off um, then there's the underline feature so if the font doesn't have an underline style which sometimes they don't sometimes they do actually it's it's more common that they don't um, but then you can underline text and you can also strike through text and in these you can do both at the same time if you'd wish so that is that for the uh, the fonts um, you can change the anti-aliasing method we talked about that way before we even talked about illustrator we talked about anti-aliasing and then you can also change your uh, keyboard layout and such so you know so you know go ahead and choose your your language uh, that you're going to use for the part of the font if it has those extensions okay now in the interest of getting this video out today I'm going to go very quickly through the rest of the type uh, issues so um, I'm going to close this I'm going to select this text box and delete it I'm going to get rid of all of this text on screen and we're going to go through the other type tools and then in the next lesson I will show you um, some type editing. So you have the type tool which we've discussed and the interesting thing is if you have a shape, any old shape will do and let's grab a star also you can see that the fill on all of these is black and there is no stroke so you'll notice one thing if you go with either the type tool as you near the corner look at the look at the cursor it's it's got a square a square shape around it and as you near the corner of a shape it will turn into that dotted circle around it all that means is type within this uh, this shape and if you click it immediately converts that shape to a text area now I would say a text box but it's not truly a box because you can do it on a uh, excuse me let's clear out of there you can do that to a, a circle and so a circle is not a text box is it is a circle a text box no all right um, you could also put that on a star remember to select out of your text and as you go near any point or side of that star it begins to turn into a text area okay so one thing you noticed I hope you noticed all of the, uh, de the, the, the definitions of that character or the, excuse me, the object. The object fill and the object stroke disappeared. They, they no longer exist. So there's that way to get into, I'm just going to undo actually because it's going to be easier. Um, that way to turn something into a text area. The other way is the area type tool. Hey look, as you see we're already using it so we were already using it without uh, selecting it all we had to do is go near the edge of our text area shape okay so you can access that there and then there's the type on a path tool now the type on a path tool is very interesting uh, I'll show you that here you click on a path and now you can type on the outside of that shape and now you can't see that because the circles in the way alright fine okay so you can type on the outside of a shape whoopsie I'm in that text alright fine get the pen tool 
let's make a nice curvy shape get my text type on a path tool and as you see I didn't I didn't get my type on a path tool I have the type tool so as I near that path I now have the type on path tool that I can use and have type on the path and all that was was simply hovering near the path and now I can do that on a shape but I in order to do it in order to turn type on a path on onto a shape you have to use the type on a path tool okay so there it is alright what else do we have the uh, vertical type tool. Now that one's fun. This is the vertical type tool. And as you see it just typed but placed each letter so that they are legible but after each character it line breaks down to the next one. Um, if however you would like to go with the type tool and type something sideways you can always turn that as I showed you in the previous one and so you can put it in a vertical direction but it was created with the type tool that way so there's that option as well vertical type area or vertical area type tool well that does exactly what you would sorry I've got a clicker there so this is the vert you know and so it'll type inside the shape in a vertical direction just like the vertical type tool uh, there's also the vertical type on a path tool and I think I'm running out of paths let's clear some of this out just by hitting delete I think I'll delete that one. I have to clear out of it. And then this one. We'll delete that and instead we'll go with the vertical type on a path tool. <laughs> it doesn't want to. All right. Let's clear that. Make a path. I'll just use the line segment tool. and get my vertical type on a path tool. I'll click that path and then start typing. So you see how the vertical type tools work. And then there is the touch type tool which we are not even going to consider during this class. But for now, uh, I'm sorry, we're not going to do that. I will put a link to a very nicely done, uh, it's done by Justin Seeley. Uh, it's through the uh, lynda.com uh, lessons and uh, it, it's out on YouTube for free uh, just to take a look at what the touch type tool does. And I, like I said, I'll put a link to that in the description and you can go check that out if you're interested. So the two most common things I'm asked as a designer uh, when I'm working with somebody uh, teaching them uh, how to use Adobe Illustrator and type. The, the two most common things are putting type on a circle and how to work with type on a circle. So we're going to do that and then, uh, then the next one is um, how to uh, use type in a in a design and use it for the negative space for example uh, to knock out a color and we will discuss that one in the next uh, lesson lesson 5.2 type editing where we convert type to outlines and so stick around for that um, but first let's discuss putting type on a circle so I've got uh, fit my artboard to the window. I've got a circle here. I'm actually, uh, we'll delete that. I want to go back to my default colors and I will find a center point and constrain it. And now I've got a nice big circle that we can work with. 
So the first thing I want to do is grab the type tool and I will type or excuse me type on a path because I'm going to type on this path and it is a closed path and again in order to do that you need to have your type on a path tool otherwise it will default to the um, type area or area type tool so all you do is click and let's put uh, something amazing here is the uh, um, amazing whoops can't spell award for awesomeness and this is my new my new award that I'm gonna give out so uh, just like with any text you can select it I want to center it and for whatever reason it centered on the bottom of the circle so how do I get that back up to the top well that is easy I can either use the selection tool or the direct selection tool or I can simply hold down command and I actually want the direct selection tool so I'm going to do that instead however if I hold down command you can simply just rotate and hold constrain with shift or hold shift to constrain and now I have flipped it 180 degrees and now I have my awesome award, or amazing award for awesomeness. Let's pick a different font. Let's go something with more impact. And so in that case, I'll use the impact font. And there it is. And that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to choose the direct selection tool. And it gives me some editing abilities with this type path. The first one you can't really see because it's dark text. So let's look here. There is a, um, a little center point, as you can see, on my icon, my cursor icon. And so if I click that and start to drag, you can see that I can drag that point around the circle. So that's pretty fun. So that's the center point. I'm going to put that back at the center. Um, the next thing is we have these endpoints, and you can grab the endpoint, and you can grab the other endpoint, and it just shortens the, you know, the white space for a better any lack of a better term um, around the text. If you cut off the word, it'll bounce and give you that red box there. So you have those options go back to the center point which is right there and make sure that's center so things you can do with your circle or with your text is you can pull it to the inside of the circle which is pretty awesome and you can drag it around the outside of the circle I'm going to leave it right there at the top for uh, the reason that I want to have a separate line of text on the bottom. Now, as you see, I have this line of text and it's great, but I want, I want something else down here. So if I want a second set of text, I'm going to have to either copy this text and move it uh, paste and move that pasted copy or create a whole nother circle and draw on that circle uh, with my type on a path tool so I don't want to do that that's too much work I'm pretty lazy here let's find the shortest way possible command C control C on your keyboard on your PC and then commands F or control F to paste in front and now I have a second copy of that and we will twirl that thing around or, or rotate it and hold down shift to constrain and now this is pretty cool it's going the wrong direction though so what I want to do and to get into your text you can double or double click it with the direct selection tool and it will start it will change to the to the type tool and select all the text that's pretty cool I like that feature um, Let's call this the, the 2015 award, or the 2015 version of the award. So then we'll grab our direct selection tool, 
grab our center point. Where is our center point? No, I want the text center point. So here it is, and I just pull it towards the center of the circle, and now it's on the inside. And that's pretty cool, so I can double click that, make it bigger. Let's go all the way to 72, because this is the amazing word for awesomeness. And now I have a problem. The next thing that people ask is how to move this text outside the circle. You see it right now it's on the it's resting on the line of the of the circle. I want it on the outside. Well, let's see if there's anything we can use from our character panel. And there is, and it's called the baseline shift. So let's move the baseline shift, push that out, and there it is. It's now on the outside. Uh, but now it's all spaced apart. So which one is that going to be? Is that the tracking or the kerning? Well, it's the whole the whole phrase, the whole word, in this case the whole number, that we want to reduce the tracking for. And so let's just start and let's just hold down that key until we get it about where we think we want it. Okay? Now I've got my my 2015 Amazing Award for Awesomeness. And now I can finish my design and uh, put some other things to it. Let's add another circle so that it looks like there's some sort of bounding to it, some sort of reasoning why it's there. Let's increase that stroke and let's copy and paste in front and let's make a larger one on the outside but it's got to go all the way to the outside of that text and oops now we need to add one to that text so copy and paste and let's zoom out a little bit and here we go we'll grab our cut tool and cut there and cut there using my smart guide that's how I know where to go and then I can cut that and we'll bring that there and constrain where are you buddy something like that and then we can shift that line there and shift that line there and now I've got a pretty amazing award uh, let's do let's do my favorite let's do a star tool in the middle go to the center and hold it shift to constrain it and we'll bounce that up and we will change the colors to a nice kind of a maroonish magenta thingy <laughs> that looks too communist <laughs> let's go something safe like the nice blue all right there's my amazing award for awesomeness using type on a path on a circle yay Woo. all right everybody's happy uh hmm i don't like that circle very much anyway good enough for now uh so that's how you can use the the type on a path on a circle to put your type going around uh to make some sort of award thing uh Enjoy, and uh, we'll see you next time in two or 5.2 type editing, where we will convert some type to outlines and use it for our our own benefit. Okay, thank you. Bye.